All right, what's going on y'all? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So for those of you who don't know, just yesterday I had four and a half wisdom teeth taken out. That's why I look like a chipmunk. That's why uh, I look like Kanye West and Through the Wire. That's why my face is swollen. Um, but I'm fine now. Yesterday I was in a lot of pain, um, but that only lasts, you know, it only lasts a day. I'm happy about that because if this was something that lasts multiple days, oh, I would be, I would be mad. So I'm good now. Um, I adjusted my mic levels and all that good stuff so I don't have to, you know, talk too much on my own power and all that good stuff because my face is still obviously a little stiff and the swelling needs to go down. Yeah, and apparently most people get their wisdom teeth taken out when they were kids. My dentist never recommended I, I do that, but now they did because they saw it could become a problem. I, I was never in any pain, but they said it could become a problem later on. So yeah, they took out four and a half. The half is because the half was apparently that tooth, that specific tooth that they took half out of, it was connected to a nerve. So they said, if we take out the whole thing, then we could damage the nerve and you would apparently lose function of your whole bottom lip. I'm like, yeah, well, let's not, let's not do that. Um, and then the four, apparently I have an uncommon situation. This is pretty rare. I have four wisdom teeth on my top layers. Most people just have two on the bottom, two on the top. I had literally four. So I had two at the top and then two behind those. And obviously just two at the bottom. Most people just have four total. I had six. So yeah, um, they took out the, the four at the top and the half at the, the half at the bottom. And the other one, they said, we're going to leave that alone. That's not a problem. So yeah, that's, the, that's what the hell I went through yesterday, but it's whatever. Um, I'm fine now is the point. So let's talk about this. Uh, this topic. So Sony has delayed six of its live service games. So six of the live service games are going to release by March, 2026. That's what they claim. That's the schedule. And the ones after that, after March, 26, 2026, they're still working on release dates. They're still working on the development of those. They're unsure about those. Um, what I found surprising, I guess, about about this is, and yeah, I know I always got to talk about the live service stuff because, you know, I care about these multiplayer games. Um, I found a lot of people looking at this and kind of twisting this into glass half full when I was looking at this, like, even though this is this is something that was kind of reported already, it just wasn't confirmed by by Sony and PlayStation. I think Insider Gaming or somebody, they had reported this a while ago, months ago, that Sony had delayed a bunch of their live service games. So this wasn't exactly news. It was just the first time Sony was confirming it. So the, te the interim CEO, uh, Hiroki Totoki, he had a statement and his statement is kind of like, you know, his quote is kind of butchered. I'm going to read it as, as is. He says, we are reviewing this. So the titles, we have not been able to meet gamers expectations, but we are trying as much as possible that this would be uh, be played by the gamers and liked by gamers for a long time. So the 12 titles, so six will be released by fiscal year 2025, which is March 2026. Um, that's our current plan. And the remaining six titles, as for when to be released, we are wor still working on that. And the live service games and multiplayer titles, uh, that's, that's the total of that. So in mid to long term, we want to enlarge this kind of service, and that's the unchanged policy of our company. It's not that we stick to certain titles, but for the gamer's quality, uh, for, but for the gamer's quality should be the most important. That's how we feel about it. And that's always been Sony's mantra. That's what they hang their hat on. It's all about quality for them. And that's one of the things they can always say in their favor. Um, so it, it's it's. Yeah. So first of all, just to reiterate, I was never in favor of 12 live service games. Um, I, I found that to be un unnecessary. The reason why they're doing that is because we all know uh, a lot of live service games don't succeed. A lot of them fail. Right. So you kind of like uh, throw a large net and see what sticks. It, it's the you know, if, if you if you launch 12, honestly, you kind of hope to become a massive, massive success. And that's not even guaranteed. So I was, I'm very much all in favor of, you know, multiplayer, you know, them developing multiplayer games. I've been calling for this since last generation where are the multiplayer games, 
It's just unfortunate, in my opinion, that multiplayer games are now just de facto live service games because these companies don't want to make a multiplayer game that people play that with, with the intention for people to play short term, which is kind of ironic because there are a lot of multiplayer games that are not meant to be live service that actually end up having a longer life than the than the live service games with that are designed to 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 live five to ten years so there you know there's always the irony of that right but it, the, i support these multi this multiplayer initiative once again because i want the multiplayer games and they are just now de facto live service games um, and some people were, I was surprised that some people were looking at this, like this report as like glass half full because they're looking at it and they were twisting it as if, oh, Sony is, they were, they, some people were twisting this as to like, as if Sony had a great problem on their hands. Oh, we have so many live service games ready. We have to delay some of them. That, that's not the case. It's not the case. They, they have to. They have to delay these, some of these live service games because they have no choice. Some people are talking like, oh, they're just slowing down to like space these games out or something like that. No, they have no choice but to do this. That's, that's clear. We know some of these live service games have been in development hell and they're having trouble. And I'm OK with that fact. It, it, it's going to come with the territory of doing something that they're not completely familiar with. It's unex, you know, it's it's unexplored to them. It, it's new, so I'm okay with the growing pains of live service games. All this shit that we've been hearing about about all these live service games, the problems and the issues. Me personally, I'm okay with that. No, I'm not. I'm not one of these people who thinks live service games need to die and Sony needs to quit on them. I just don't believe that. What personally, me, what I would have done is I would have been very selective as and, and bet bet on the safe games that I that I believe had the best chance of being successful live service games instead of just casting a wide net and seeing w what works. I would have selected I, I would have like seen like you know if if they were all on the board and we had 12. You know I I me personally I would have been like you know what? Okay. We're going to take four. We're going to take four. These are the best chances. These are the IPs that have the best chances of being, maybe five, the best chances of being a success. And by the way, so I think some people forget, not all of these 12 live service games are actually being developed by Sony. These are not like all first party games. But that's what I would have done. I would have chose the cream of the crop, the best chance of survival, instead of having, you know, because you're, you're still fun, even if you're not, is, even if it's not all first party developers, you're still funding it. So I would have chose the best four, best four or five. That's what I would have done. We're moving forward with that. So to me, like the, the growing pains and the issues that come with it, that's, you know, that's, that's what's going to happen. But to me, the live service games taking a long time and having some issues in development is not necessarily the problem to me is do you have the, and, and they've obviously committed to single player games they're still making single player games you know they, they haven't abandoned those um and they've made that very clear but games are taking um more and more time to develop the game development life cycle is hella long so the the thing is if you have a steady flow of just your single player games coming um and releasing and on the back burner people know these live service games are also coming, people aren't really going to worry about them. Like, uh, who, who cares? We're still getting our single player cadence, but your single player cadence hasn't been great. That's the issue. If, if, and, and I've said this on Weapon Wheel, and it's my stance still, if Sony releases three first party games in 2024, I have no issue. I, I, think, that's, I think that's an acceptable standard. Three first party games, right? So if you release that, and even if none of them are, even if none of them are live service games, I think that's fine. You still delivered as a company uh, with, with titles. Um, and people will be, I think people, even the ones who don't care for the live service games as a service, um, they're still going to be satisfied because what they want, their needs are being met. So once again, I don't think the live service games are the problem. You still have to just deliver the other games that people, people want. Um, 
So and, and I'm and I'm just not sure because that, that you know, as I've always said, play, every PlayStation generation, they've always had a down year, and I consider 2023 their down year. I mean, realistically, you only release Spider Man two. There were a few other things here and there, you know, VR and all this other and uh, what a few a few other things, but. Major releases, it was Spider Man 2. So I give me, me, I give you one of those. You don't get another year like that where it's acceptable. You don't get another one. So if you have another year, and there are some things, some reports that point to in 2024, at least for the first half, all we might get is Helldivers. And to me, that even that's unacceptable. Even if somehow in, in the second half of the 2024, they managed to release. Um, three uh, third part uh, first party games, and I don't think like um sticking three and in, in six months is a good idea. Even if they manage to do that, the f- you know the first half of the year to me that's unacceptable. Relying on third parties and like I see a lot of PlayStation dudes s- suddenly you know acting like third party is is first party. I'm like I don't know what's wrong with y'all. You know, having a console has, you know, a specific console has always been about first party. A lot of y'all are acting like delusional fanboys to act like that's not what it's always been about. That's always what we've cared about. It's not like third party doesn't exist, but third parties are a side. It's macaroni and cheese. It's it's mashed potatoes. It's Brussels sprouts. Whatever the hell you prefer as a side. It's not the main course. It's not the steak. It's complimentary. So first party will always be the most important. So that's that's my my thoughts on it. Um sure. It, e- even if it's not like a a good problem on their hands that they have 12 12 ready and they just have to um and they and they just uh have to uh spread it out. The result, I think the result is still technically positive that these are going to be more spread out and, and they, and they need to be, but it's, it's, it's not like, oh, things are just like, oh, we, it's not, it's not like they have like, oh, this, this great issue on their hands. No, it's, 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 it's a problem that it's a problem, but you needed to spread out these live service games anyway. That's, that's what it is. Um, so yeah, th- I mean, th- those are my thoughts, man. Um, and I, I st- and I don't even know if the games, the six live service games that they're talking about by March 2026, which, by the way, feels pretty far away. Um, and it's by it's by the end of March 2026. So it could be anywhere from now, you know, so that means we should get some a, a decent amount next year. Um, that's what that's what that means. It should. But I don't know, man. Um I don't, I don't even know if those are going to be the live service games that I personally am most excited about and care about. I, I hope I would, I hope we get to see them, um, at bare minimum, but we'll, we'll, we'll see, man. Those are my thoughts on this, uh, simple solution. They need to release, you know, the single, single player games that people really want and have the, uh, the, the, you know, the live service games on the back burner, um, just being in development. So let me know what y'all think. Hit the like button, hit the notification bell, follow me on Twitter, all that good stuff. I'm going to catch y'all later. Peace.